Ezekiel chapter number 48. Now these are the names of the tribes. From the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazarain, the border of Damascus northward, to the coast of Hamath. For these are his sides east and west. A portion for Dan. He's up north. And uh, that's, where he, that's where he was settled in the land. From the east side unto the west side, a portion for Asher. And by the border of Asher, from the east side, even unto the west side, a portion from Naphtali. This would be probably from the Mediterranean to the Jordan. And by the border of Naphtali, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Manasseh. That's one of Joseph's boys. He became part of a tribe with Ephraim next, when Jacob blesses the two boys. And by the border of Manasseh, from the <coughs> east side unto the west side, a portion from Ephraim. And by the border of Ephraim, and I have no here, Revelation 7, 4, for Dan and for Ephraim. These are tribes that are not mentioned for the 144,000. Yet in the millennium, they have a land portion. So it shows God's not finished. With two tribes, even they're not named among the 144,000, but in the millennium, they get their land. And by the border of Ephraim from the east side, even unto the west side, a portion from Reuben. And by the border of Reuben from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Judah. And by the border of Judah from the east side unto the west side, Shall be the offering which ye shall offer of five and twenty thousand reeds in breadth, in length, as one of the other parts, from the east side unto the west side, and the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. Now here's a land that's giving by the people to God for the temple, for the priests. The oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and twenty thousand length and of ten thousand of in breadth. So the land is measured. In this in this portion of scripture, we're just told from, by the children of Israel, and east side to the west side, here's a portion, but this one is measured. And for them, even for the priest, shall be this holy oblation. This is what we're talking about. Toward the north, five and twenty thousand in length. Toward the west, ten thousand in breadth. And toward the east, ten thousand in breadth. And toward the south, five and twenty thousand in length. And the sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the midst thereof. That's the temple. That's the Millennium Temple we already read when we did the measurements. The Ezekiel spoke, spoke about the suburbs. The land, the housing, and the care of the, of the Levites are in this portion. It shall be for the priests that are sanctified, the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. This oblation of the land that is offered shall be unto them a thing most holy by the border of the Levites. And they're not going to be firing missiles. They're not going to be fighting over it. There will be no unclean people. And over against the border, the priests and the Levites, they shall have five and twenty thousand in length and ten thousand in breadth. All the length shall be five and twenty thousand and the breadth ten thousand. And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. And the five thousand that are left in the breath over against the five and twenty five thousand five and twenty thousand shall be a profane place for the city, for dwelling, and for suburbs, and the city be in the midst thereof. These shall be the measurements thereof, the north side four thousand and five hundred, the south side four thousand and five hundred, and the east side four thousand and five hundred. 
in the west side, 4,500 square. And the suburbs of the city shall be toward the north, 250, and toward the south, 250, and toward the east, 250, and toward the west, 250, suburbs for the priest. The residue, what's left over, in the length over against the oblation of the holy portion shall be 10,000 eastward, 10,000 westward, and shall be over against the oblation of the holy portion, that, uh, near, uh, right for, buttoned up against. An increase thereof shall be for food unto them that serve the city. So there is, or town squares, got that right out of the Bible, for the priest to live, for the food for the priest, is an area that is uh, called the profane place. And they that serve the city shall serve it out of all the tribes of Israel. Where does this food come from? It comes from the twelve tribes. And all the oblations shall be five and twenty thousand by five and twenty thousand. You shall offer the holy oblation four square within the possession of the city. So this entire area given to God is a square, city square, town square, a block. You ever wonder where you got your, your blocks of your cities? You ever wonder where you got the town square? And in, in the meeting of the town square is a place called the meeting house. Where it was also the church house up north. First thing they would build when they get into an area, they build a, a meeting house. And that's where they would meet with God. That's where they would bring the political uh, and the laws, the courts, the civil. And you found it right out of Ezekiel 48. And the residue shall be for the prince, David, on the one side and on the other of the holy oblation. And the possession of the city over against the five and twenty thousand of the oblation toward the east border. And westward over against the five and twenty thousand toward the west border. Over against the portion of the prince it shall be the holy oblation. And the sanctuary of the house shall be in the midst thereof. <coughs> so there's part land for... Uh, the prince, David. Moreover, from the possession of the Levites, and from the possession of the city, being in the midst of that which is the prince's, between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin, shall be for the prince. And the rest of the tribes, from the east side unto the west side, Benjamin shall have a portion. Judah is north, Benjamin is south of this land. Right now, well, where we're reading Ezekiel before we conquered, Judah encamped the whole south Israel. And Benjamin was in Judah. As for the rest of the tribes, from the east side unto the west side, Benjamin shall have a portion. And by the border of Benjamin, from the east side unto the west side, Simeon shall have a portion. I don't know what this order of the children of Israel are. It's not by birth. And from the border of Simeon to the east side of the west border, Issachar, a portion. Yeah, but it's equal. And by the border of Issachar, from the east side unto the west side, Zebulun, a portion. And by the border of Zebulun, from the east side unto the west side, Gad, a portion. And by the border of Gad, at the south side, southward, the border shall be even from Tamar unto the waters of Strife and Kadesh, and to the river toward the great sea. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance. Divide by lot. The land has already been divided by the tribes. And this is the same thing that Joshua does. By lot, he gives out the cities. <coughs> but God... Tells them where they are. Joshua went, had them go out in the land, describe it in a book. You know, whatever they did, they, they gave up the land. Here it's already told. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance. These are their portions, saith the Lord God. Now Israel is going to be no more two nations. <laughs> They're one nation again. That hasn't been since uh, Rehoboam. 
and Jeroboam. They have been split and have not gotten back together. There is no North and South Israel in Ezekiel 48 or the millennium. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. There is no Ephraim and Manasseh gates. So when it comes to the gates, Joseph gets a gate, Levi gets a gate. At the east side, 4,500 and three gates. One gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, and one gate of Dan. If you were to study this out, this is not by birth order. Judah, it goes Reuben, Judah, Levi. I believe it was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, then Judah. Judah, I believe, is the fourth son born. The one gate of Joseph, the one gate of Benjamin. Well, Joseph came before Benjamin. And one gate of Dan. Dan was born in the middle. Dan is the first boy that is born by not one of Jacob's wives. I believe it was Rachel's handmaid. And that boy becomes a character throughout the Bible. His tribe becomes a type of Antichrist. And at the north, at the south side, 4,500 measures and three gates. One gate of Simeon. He was born, <coughs> he was born early. The gate of Issachar and the gate of Zebulun. And the west side, 4,500. With their three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, and one gate of Nephtali. So, we see the land divided in a certain order. We see the gates are divided by a certain order. We see sometimes Ephraim and Manasseh. We see sometimes Levi and Joseph. We see tribes that are missing. When Moses blesses the twelve tribes of Israel, one tribe is missing. Ephraim and Dan are missing out of 144,000. And there's another place where the, the 12 tribes are mentioned. And I believe Simeon is left out. You to get how God names these names. And the orders and the happenings thereof, you would have some. Because God just doesn't, you know, he doesn't throw 12, 12 names in the hat. Okay, let's say, all right. Oh, oh look, Reuben. Okay, next. All right, Levi, he doesn't do that. There is a specific reason why. And when it comes to the 12 tribes of Israel, it is reason that God does it. What is the reason? I have not known. It was round about 18,000 measures. And the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is there. Now, that's not Jesus Christ. Who is it, Mr. Jehovah Witness? The city takes on the name of Jehovah. Who is the king of kings and who's going to sit in David's throne? The Lord. Ezekiel closes out to refute and rebuke all Jehovah's Witnesses. They gave Jesus a crown with a title. It was the crown of thorns, but guess what crown that Jesus is going to earn when he comes back on that white horse? Now, Revelation 21, 16, this is not New Jerusalem, verse 35. The measurements don't match, and the name don't match. If some people will say that this is New Jerusalem we just read about. And I forget the gates, if they're named for the New Jerusalem, they're, they're getting, the gates are named and the foundations are named. One is for the 12 tribes and one is for the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 
This is not New Jerusalem. This is the land that Ezekiel's been talking about, been closing with. This is the millennial kingdom that we are reading about. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ seated as king in David's throne, as David the prince, as the Levites are working in the temple, sacrifices, and Israel, despite the Israelites, the Arabians, despite the United Nations, despite the Roman Catholic Church, despite the Utah Orleans over there with, with their Morari, or Baloni, with the Native Americans with Hebrew names, this land, despite the PLO, is and will be given by Ezekiel's account, by the book of Revelation, by all the Bible. Israel will get that land from as north as Damascus all the way down to the south by the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. That land is already prescribed by God. You can't change it. We just read it. There are border lines right now set on that land. No matter what anybody says. And in those borders are given names of 12 boys. 12 boys of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to make it more calm, Levites get a portion, Ephraim gets a, a portion. Manasseh gets a portion, but when you walk through those gates, there are the 12 boys. No Ephraim and no Manasseh. There's no getting out of it. When you enter the millennium, you are going to know you are on Jewish soil with a Jewish Messiah, all about God's people called Israel, and you won't be able to do anything about it. So, can... Somebody who hate Jews be saved. As much as any Jehovah Witness that, that says that Jesus is not God, I say no. Because these are God's people. In order to deny the Jewish people, you've got to deny Jesus Christ. And when you deny the birth of Jesus Christ, you deny the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Because Mary had to be Jewish. Luke chapter 3. His adoptive father had to be Jewish. Matthew 1. And this book, no matter what any American thinks, is Jewish. I don't see any book called America. Or English. Yet I see a book called Hebrew. And James writes to 12 tribes. Today, we, when we read our Bible, we read about Dukes of Edom. I don't see anything in here about Dukes. I don't see anything here about Princes of Ishmael. So with all the wars and killings that have been going on in the Middle East are of no vain, when God brings his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and settles that land that they're fighting on, he says, okay, Children of God, I mean the Jews, go home. Here's a map. And they're going to know right where to go because it's all laid out. And another thing it tells us, we know that the earth is going to change. <coughs> Jerusalem is going to be the highest point in the whole world. It's going to be massive earthquakes in the tribulation period. It's going to be massive changes. But what we just read in Ezekiel 48, do you realize it tells you that there's still going to be places called Damascus? There's still going to be a place called the sea? Those places are still going to be there. With a land that's already marked, no matter what army or what man or what ruler has to say about it. And then... I don't know what we're going to be doing as rulers in the millennium. I'm talking about born again saved Christians that love the Lord Jesus Christ, that did not deny him and try to do right. When we are given rulers of, of cities, will there be times that we will walk through these gates? I don't know. 
I would assume so. Will we be able to walk up to that temple and say, hey, I read about that. I studied about that. And yet there are some Christians out there today that they could walk right into this building, bump their head right into it. What is this place? You haven't read the roadmap? You haven't studied? Imagine a Christian who's into animal rights and then walk into the millennium and say, oh my God, they're killing animals. What, you didn't read? You didn't study? This is not just about coming back on that white horse behind the Lord Jesus Christ. That's great and wonderful. Look what we're going into. Look whose banner we're going to raise over the whole world. It's not going to be the, the star of David. It's going to be some, some kind of uh, symbol, some kind of emblem that God has set. It won't be the star of David over these people called Jews. And Paul tells the church. I pray for them. Pray for the peace in Jerusalem. What is the only peace of Jerusalem? The Lord Jesus Christ sitting on a throne called David's throne, which we've been reading about in chapter 48, 47, 46, 45, 44. This is all about Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus is going to sit down and see. Compared to what he saw when he came to the first temple. When he came to the first temple, twice he walks into that temple and he's kicking down tables, he's knocking over money changers. He he's man, he's just making a ruckus. You guys know what he's gonna do when he walks in this temple? Yep, yeah, you guys are doing it right. It's good over there, doing a great job. I'm mighty proud of you boys, Zadok. And we're right, walking right up the, the, the north gate from the south. David will be there, their king, their ruler, their prince. They'll have their national identity. While all the Jew haters are burning in hell. 